Hello everyone, welcome to another video and in this video I will show you some small updates to this pipes hanger script. I did create this script two or three years ago and I did create this script in the Revit 2020. So now I did update the script to work in the Revit 2023. I did receive an email where one user said that uh, the script doesn't work in the Revit 2023. Um, I did test the script in the Revit 2023 and it works for me, but nevertheless uh, when I did open the script I did forgot actually how unorganized this script was and also I did use I think three or four different packages no actually just two so it's a data shapes and clockwork so in this update I did reduce dependency of the packages the script still use uh, data shapes uh, package because I like to have user interface. Um, I will also show you this script. I will show you uh, part by part. But actually, I didn't change much. Uh, entire function of the script did remain the same. I did just group some things and show some some improvements. I think the biggest uh, improvements in quotes. It's actually uh, this part over here, or we have, or something like this. So previously I did use a clockwork element location, um, and then from curves I did ask for the start end point, and then I did create a vector by those two points. But actually in this update version of the script I did go with uh, get location and when you ask for location for the pipes you will always have a line so, and then you can just go with the direction so when you deliver pipes over here in two steps in two nodes you will have everything that you need so you can reduce dependency of clockwork and you can also reduce the number of nodes and if you want you can also change this in this uh, Revit 2020 version of script. So okay, let's go to to Revit 2023 and let us just uh, run the script. So still, I'm using the same sample file. This is not any uh, real project file. What is important for me uh, while we are testing this script is that we have different pipe sizes, that we have pipe insulation, that we have slope in both directions. So over here I have some sample route where I have all of that and then when I uh, generate those hangers it must respect all the sizes, insulation, slopes and so on. Um, so user interface is the same. So we need to select elements, OK, finish. Height, I did explain this in previous video, so uh, over here you need to put what is the height uh, until where those hanger bars will go. Spacing, over here for selection of the family, previously you did have family type uh, and then um, the family type name it will go. So I did split that string over here. You can see only the name. Uh, so we will use pipe hanger for functionality of this script. You must use this family or you must create a family with the same parameters and same function as I did create it over here. Uh, so if the script doesn't work on your side, please check if you did copy also this family from the sample file. If you want, you can translate that initial hanger and that is it okay those bars are too long but they are going to this level so that is okay so they will adjust according to the insulation size slope so everything is the same like in the previous version it will recognize and rotate family instances according to the angle of the pipes and that is it so now back to Dynamo. so you can see over here I did group uh, all the nodes for the user interface this um, I with dash 
just means that I don't want to use geometrical preview inside the Dynamo because when you turn off uh, geometrical preview inside the Dynamo you will speed up a little bit execution of the Dynamo script so that is the only uh, point of turning off the geometrical preview so uh, over here as I told you uh, previously you will, you would see these family types and then it will go uh, the name for each family over here I don't want to deliver that as an input I want to go without that first part so as a case we are going with those names as a values we are going with elements outside from that maybe I did change a little bit over here uh, that uh, width in order to see better user interface uh, I did rearrange a little bit those nodes so we can easily follow logic over here I did change nothing I will not explain entire script step by step because you have the previous video as I told you I did just organize a little bit this script and I did check if the script works in the Revit 2023 and also I did optimize it a little bit so we have a bit less nodes but the overall function is the same Yes, over here you can see, so previously we did have four different nodes and we did use clockwork, now we are only using uh, data shapes package and we are, going, uh, we are going over here with just two nodes. Now somebody will maybe say that uh, why you did go with uh, Python scripts, uh, what you have in those Python scripts, but also other users uh, post as a comment why you use so much of the custom packages, so you cannot actually indulge both, both opinions. Uh, but over here we have previous video with where I did use Clockwork, so where you see Python script over here, uh, you can just take a look at that previous video and you will see corresponding custom uh, package node if you have any other questions regarding this script you can either write me directly or you can leave a comment and i will try to respond to those questions so in order for script to work in the Revit 2023 you need to install data shape uh, custom package and you need to use the family, either this family that I did uh, use or you can create some other family. What is very important, if you are creating your own uh, family, it must have all the parameters which I will all over here call and for which I will uh, basically write the values. So that is it. Thank you for watching. Bye.